and Clex Practice Exam for Renal Disorders 1. Question 1. Which of the following symptoms do you expect to see in a patient diagnosed with acute pyelonephritis? A. Jaundice and flank pain. B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness and chills. C. Burning sensation on urination. D. Polyuria and nocturia. <laughs> Answer B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gallbladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Question 2. You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection uterus. Which statement by the patient suggests that it is likely? A. I pee a lot. B. It burns when I pee. C. I go hours without the urge to pee. D. My pee smells sweet. Answer. B. A common symptom of a ut is dysuria. A patient with a ute often reports frequent voiding of small amounts and the urgency to void. Urine that smells sweet is often associated with diabetic ketoacidosis. Question 3. Which instructions do you include in the teaching care plan for a patient with cystitis receiving phenazepiridine pyridium? A. If the urine turns orange-red, call the doctor. B. Take phenazepiridine just before urination to relieve pain. C. Once painful urination is relieved, discontinue prescribed antibiotics. D. After painful urination is relieved, stop taking phenazepiridine. Answer D. Pyridium is taken to relieve dysuria because it provides an analgesic and anesthetic effect on the urinary tract mucosa. The patient can stop taking it after the dysuria is relieved. The urine may temporarily turn red or orange due to the dye in the drug. The drug isn't taken before voiding and is usually taken three times a day for two days. Question 4 which patient is at greatest risk for developing urinary tract infection uter? A. A 35 years. O. Woman with a fractured wrist. B. A 20 years. O. Woman with asthma. C. A 50 years. O. Postmenopausal woman. D. A 28 years. O. With angina. Question 3. Which instructions do you include in the teaching care plan for a patient with cystitis receiving phenazepiridine pyridium? A. If the urine turns orange-red, call the doctor. B. Take phenazepiridine just before urination to relieve pain. C. Answer. B. A common symptom of a ut is dysuria. A patient with a ut often reports frequent voiding of small amounts and the urgency to void. Urine that smells sweet is often associated with diabetic ketoacidosis. Question 
Question 3. Which instructions? Answer A. Dialysate should be infused quickly. The dialysate should be infused over 15 minutes or less when performing peritoneal dialysis. The fluid exchange takes place over a period ranging from 30 minutes to several hours. Answer B. A common symptom of a is dysuria. A patient with a ute often reports frequent voiding of small amounts and the urgency to void. Urine that smells sweet is often associated with diabetic ketoacidosis. Question 3. Which instructions do you include in the teaching care plan for a patient with cystitis receiving phenazepiridine pyridium? A. If the urine turns orange-red, call the doctor. B. Take phenazepiridine just before urination to relieve pain. C. Once painful urination is relieved, dis... <laughs> Answer B. Coast ovitipural angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gallbladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritus. Which instruction should you include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Rub the skin vigorously with a towel. B. Take frequent baths. C. Apply alcohol-based emollients to the skin. D. Keep fingernails short and clean. Answer B. Coast ovitipro. Answer D. Pyridium is taken to relieve dysuria because it provides an analgesic and anesthetic effect on the urinary tract mucosa. The patient can stop taking it after the dysuria is relieved. The urine may temporarily turn red or orange due to the dye in the drug. Question 11. Which intervention do you plan to include with a patient who has renal cataly? A. Maintain bed rest. B. Increase dietary purines. C. Restrict fluids. D. Strain all urine. Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritus. Which instruction should you include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Rub the skin vigorously with a towel. B. Take frequent baths. C. Apply alcohol. Answer. B. 
B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gall bladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Answer C. The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Question 10. Your patient with cro- Answer B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gall bladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Question 14. Which of the following causes the majority of uters in hospitalized patients? A. Lack of fluid intake. B. Inadequate perineal care. C. Invasive procedures. D. Immunosuppression. Answer C. The most common. <laughs> Question 15. Clinical manifestations of acute glomerulonephritis include which of the following? A. Chills and flank pain. B. Oliguria and generalized edema. C. Hematuria and proteinuria. D. Dysuria and hypotension. Answer. B. Coast ovitebral. Question 14. Which of the following causes the majority of uters in hospitalized patients? A. Lack of fluid intake. B. Inadequate perineal care. C. Invasive procedures. D. Immunosuppression. Answer. C. The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Question 15. Clinical manifestations of acute glomerulonephritis include which of the following? A. Chills and flank pain. Answer. B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gall bladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Answer B. Increased pain is usually an early indicator of decreased renal function. Question 11. Which intervention do you plan to include with a patient who has renal calculi? A. Maintain bed rest. B. Increase dietary purines. C. Restrict fluids. D. Strain all urine. Question 15. Clinical manifest. Answer. B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, 
and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates scald blood or liver obstruction. A burn answer C. The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Question 11. Which intervention do you plan to include with a patient who has renal calculi? A. Maintain bed rest. B. Increase dietary purines. C. Restrict fluids. D. Strain all urine. Question 15. Clinical manifestations of acute glomerulonephritis include which of the following? A. Chills and flank pain. B. Oliguria and generalized edema. C. Hematuria and proteinuria. D. Dysuria and hypotension. Answer B. Coast ovitabra. Answer C. The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Answer B. Increased burn is usually an early indicator of decreased renal function. Answer B. Coast ovitabral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. 
jaundice syndicate, scald blood or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of low urinary tract infection. Question 15. Clinical manifestations of acute glomerulonephritis include which of the following? A. Chills and flank pain. B. Oliguria and generalized edema. C. Hematuria and proteinuria. Answer B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice syndicates scald blood or liver obstruction. Question 3. Which instructions do you include in the teaching care plan for a patient with cystitis receiving phenazepiridine pyridium? A. If the urine turns orange-red, call the doctor. B. Take phenazepiridine just before urination to relieve pain. C. Once painful urination is relieved, discontinue prescribed antibiotics. D. After painful urination is relieved, stop taking phenazepiridine. Question 28. Which sign indicated the second phase of acute renal failure? A. Daily doubling of urine output 4 to 5 litres slash day. B. Urine output less than 400 millilitres slash day. C. Urine output less than 100 millilitres slash day. D. Stabilization of renal function. Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diuresis of acute renal failure. Answer B. A common symptom of a uteus dysuria. A patient with a ute often reports frequent voiding of small amounts and the urgency to void. Urine that smells sweet is often associated with diabetic ketoacidosis.
Answer D. Pressure on the fistula or the extremity can decrease blood flow and precipitate clotting, so avoid taking blood pressure on the affected arm. Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritus. Which instruction should you include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Rub the skin vigorously with a towel. B. Take frequent baths. C. Apply alcohol-based emollients to the skin. D. Keep fingernails short and clean. Answer A. Daily doubling of the Question 2. You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection uter. Which statement by the patient suggests that ut is likely? A. I pee a lot. B. It burns when I pee. C. I go hours without the urge to pee. D. My pee smells sweet. <laughs> Question 28. Which sign? Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritus. Which instruction should you include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Question 32. Which action is most important during bladder training in a patient with a neurogenic bladder? A. Encourage the use of an indwelling urinary catheter. B. Set up specific times to empty the bladder. C. Encourage kajal exercises. D. Force fluids. Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diuresis of acute renal failure. Question 34. What is the best way to check the patency of the arteriovenous fistula for hemodialysis? A. Pinch the fistula and note the speed of filling on release. B. Use a needle and syringe to aspirate blood from the fistula. C. Check for capillary refill of the nail beds on that extremity. D. Palpate the fistula throughout its length to assess for a thrill. Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diuresis of acute renal failure.
Answer C. The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Answer A. Daily doubling of the Question 11. Which intervention do you plan to include with a patient who has renal cataly? A. Maintain bed rest. B. Answer. A. Dialysate should be infused quickly. The dialysate should be infused over 15 minutes or less when performing peritoneal dialysis. The fluid exchange takes place over a period ranging from 30 minutes to several hours. Answer C. The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diaresis of acute renal failure. Answer B. Coast over to Peru. Question 2. You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection uter. Which statement by the patient suggests that ut is likely? A. I pee a lot. B. It burns. <laughs> Answer C. The most common. Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diaresis of acute renal failure. Answer B. Coast ovitabral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gallbladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Question 2. You have a patient that... Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritis. Which instruction should you include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Rub the skin vigorously. Answer. C. 
The most common form of acute glomerulonephritis is caused by a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection elsewhere in the body. Answer A. Daily doubling of the Answer B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gallbladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign. Question 2. You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection uti. Which statement by the patient suggests that ut is likely? A. I pee a lot. B. It burns when I pee. C. I go hours without the urge to pee. Question 10. Your patient with cro- Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diaresis of acute renal failure. Question 2. You have a patient that might have a urinary tract infection UT. Which statement by the patient suggests that UT is likely? A. I pee a lot. B. It burns when I pee. C. I go hours without the urge to pee. D. Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritus. Which instruction should you include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Rub the skin vigorously with a towel. B. Take frequent baths. C. Apply alcohol-based emollients to the skin. D. Keep fingernails short and clean. Answer A. Daily doubling of the urine output indicates that the nephrons are healing. This means the patient is passing into the second phase diaresis of acute renal failure. Answer B. Coast ovitebral angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice indicates gallbladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Question 10. Your patient with chronic renal failure reports pruritus. Which instruction to do include in this patient's teaching plan? A. Rub the skin vigorously with a towel. B. Question 2. You have a patient that Answer B. 
coast over to pural angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice syndicates gall bladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. <laughs> Question 10. Your patient with Cronclex practice exam for renal disorders 1. Answer B. Increased BEN is usually an early indicator of decreased renal function. Answer B. Coast over to Peru. Question 28. Which sign indicated the second phase of acute renal failure? A. Daily doubling of urine output 4 to 5 litres slash day. B. Urine output less than 400 millilitres slash day. Question 49. Your patient has complaints of severe right sided flank pain, nausea vomiting and restlessness. He appears slightly pale and is diaphoretic. Vital signs are BP 140 90th millimeter of mercury, pulse 118 beats per minute, respirations 33 breaths, minute, and temperature 98.0 F. Which subjective data supports a diagnosis of renal calculi? A. Pain radiating to the right upper quadrant. B. History of mild flu symptoms last week. C. Dark colored coffee ground emesis. D. Dark, scant urine output. NCLEX practice exam for renal disorder. <laughs> Answer B. Coast over to pural angle tenderness, flank pain, and chills are symptoms of acute pyelonephritis. Jaundice syndicates gall bladder or liver obstruction. A burning sensation on urination is a sign of lower urinary tract infection. Question 28. Which sign in. <laughs>